Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, how are you guys doing? Um, I did my first Ironman triathlon in 2013 in uh, Whistler. Uh, and one of the things that I found confusing were the transition bags. You know, Ironman uses their kind of like specific transition bags for their events. And so in this video, what I wanted to do was go over each transition bag uh, provided by the race. Um, I'll also provide you with like a little bit of a, a downloadable checklist um, that you can change and use uh, just to make sure that you have everything in your transition bags. And then lastly, at the end of the video, I have one small hack that I think will speed up your transitions and I think will really help you out a lot. So this is my very expensive Ironman Canada 2019 bag. Inside here I've got some transition bags uh, and just some of the packet information that you would get if you were going through and picking up your packet at an Ironman event. Uh, and I will leave this here, maybe put that in the corner for some future videos, see if you guys can pick it out. But when you pick up your packet at an Ironman event, you'll be presented with some waivers to sign, uh, an event bracelet, uh, that you'll get to wear throughout the weekend, and all of your transition and special needs bags. And you'll also be provided with some stickers uh, that are intended for your cycling helmet, the stem of your bike, and then somewhere else on your bike as well. But also on this kind of sticker packet, you'll have uh, these gear bag stickers, which just allows you to put your race number on your gear bags. And in this case, I have five gear bag stickers. Uh, so that would be for my morning gear bag, my transition one bag to the bike, uh, my special needs bag on the bike, my T2 bag onto the run, and my special needs running bag. And the first one that we'll talk about here is just your morning clothes bag. Uh, and this is the bag that you're gonna put kind of everything that you're wearing down to the race start. Um, so typically, you know, I'll wear like warmer clothes. Uh, if it's dark, you might need stuff like a headlamp. Um, you might want a bike pump or something like that if you're pumping up your bike prior to the race. Uh, but typically I'll put, you know, change of clothes, bike pump, headlamp, things like that in this bag. Uh, and then that bag just goes to the side and you can pick it up after the race. And the next bag I have here is the T1 bag or the bike bag. Uh, and most Ironman races that I've participated in um, require that your helmet and your bike shoes not be attached to your bike uh, before the race or the swim. Um, but I've seen different races do different things. But I've always been able to put my water bottles and nutritions on my bike before the swim. So I'll typically put the helmet and the bike shoes in this bag. And keep in mind that you'll have like a changing tent uh, or an area where you'll be able to change clothes. So you could actually put a completely different set of clothing in this bag uh, and be able to change in a designated area. Um, but other things that you might consider for this bag, uh, chamois cream uh, prior to going on the bike, uh, you may wanna put like sunscreen in here. I'll also put some gels or food items in this bag. Uh, just the kind of stuff that I wanna put in my actual uh, clothing pockets. But as I'm finishing that transition, what I'll usually do is ask for help from some of the volunteers. And typically the volunteers are absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'll have like my wetsuit and my goggles um, and all of that stuff goes into this bag. And the volunteers will help you like put it in this bag, close up the bag and toss the bag off to the side so you can pick it up after the race. The next bag that I have here is called the Bike Special Needs Bag. Uh, and Ironman has this thing that they call like special needs. Um, they have two of these and they'll typically give you access to this bag uh, somewhere in the middle of your bike ride. But if you want to know the exact details, and I hope that you do, uh, Ironman usually publishes something called like their athlete guide. They usually publish it, you know, at least a week in advance before the race. Uh, and it's definitely worth taking a read through. And in that athlete guide, they'll have all the details of kind of where you'll be able to pick up your special needs bags uh, and kind of what to expect within the race. So two things to keep in mind as you're packing your special needs bags. Uh, number one, uh, you will have to slow down and probably stop uh, to grab this bag. Um, I, I think that's probably safer to slow to a stop. You can call out your number to help the volunteers uh, and that'll help speed up the process, but they do have to find your race number amongst the thousand or so race bags that they're managing. 
Uh, and number two, if you don't grab whatever is in your special needs bag, it's often thrown away or donated to charity. Um, so if you're thinking about putting like a wedding ring or something crazy in here, uh, it's not something I would suggest. And I typically use like a pretty minimal setup with my special needs bags. Uh, in this bag, you know, I'll typically put something like an extra CO2 cartridge, um, maybe some extra gels or nutrition. Uh, and my thought process with that is that, um, you know, if I have a flat early in the race, uh, I definitely feel like it's worth stopping, taking the extra time to grab that CO2, just knowing that, I, that I'll have that CO2 for backup. Uh, or if I accidentally drop some food or something like that, or if I'm just feeling like a little bit extra hungry for some odd reason, uh, it might be worth stopping and grabbing. And the honest truth is I've finished three Ironman races so far, you know, and I typically race them pretty hard. Uh, and I've yet to stop for a special needs bags um, just because I didn't want to waste the time to grab it. Uh, so all of those gels, all of those CO2s sadly are lost for all of time. Do I cry about it at night? Yes, sometimes. Uh, but I grab my little mason jar, collect those tears. Maybe someday I'll put a little MDOT sticker on there or something. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. Maybe mail it to Iron Man headquarters. I don't know. I don't know. But we were talking about transition bags. And the next transition bag that I wanna talk about is the run gear bag or the T2 bag. Uh, and I actually put a change of socks in here just in case I want it for some reason. Um, it's nice to have dry socks when you're starting a marathon. Um, obviously, you have to put running shoes in here. Uh, I also put a hat in here uh, just because, you know, I'm balding and too much sun isn't good for the old scalp. Some races will require you to wear your race number on the bike. But in North America, most of the time, you can just wear your race number on the run, which I like. And I also put some gels and nutrition type stuff in here that I'll just carry with me on the run. Um, but not too much, not too much in this bag. And the last bag I have here is the run special needs bag. Uh, and just like before, I don't typically put a lot of stuff in my special needs bags, uh, but you might wanna do something like, you know, have an extra water bottle that you're not super worried about losing, uh, gels, nutrition, things like that. You could do something fun, like write some inspirational quotes or have your wife or family write you some sort of note and put it in here. Uh, I've never done that before. Um, in fact, I think in my last race, I didn't even put this bag out uh, just because I knew that I would use a lot of the course nutrition. Uh, the on-course nutrition is typically okay for me, but I do think it's nice to put it out there just in case you think you might need it or in case you get into some kind of trouble when you're out there. Okay, one cool thing that I've seen people do with their transition bags is add ribbons to their transition bags just to distinguish their bags from all the thousand other transition bags that are out there. Uh, and yes, I know that they're numbered and they're placed in order, uh, but if you can do any sort of small stuff to make your bag a little bit more unique, uh, for it to stand out so that when you're actually running down the row of bags, you're able to pick out some sort of small difference in your bags and find it, it will make a difference. But I haven't actually used ribbons on my bags before. Uh, oddly, what I've done is just use um, tin foil, which is a little bit weird, uh, but I kind of fold it up and tie it to the bag. Uh, and what happens is it reflects the sunlight a little bit uh, and it's very easy to see. And I haven't actually ever seen anyone else do that. So now that you guys know that trick uh, and you know that I'll be doing that trick, there'll probably be thousands of transition bags with little pieces of tin foil on them and I'll never be able to find my bag. But uh, if it's the case that only a couple of us are using this hack, then we should be able to pick out our bags just a little bit faster uh, and really make it easy for us to find our transition bags. And lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and make a little checklist for you to download. Uh, what I would suggest is just using it kind of as a guide uh, and then adding your own personal items on there. Um, and then when you get to your hotel or whatever it is, just taking that checklist, putting it on each bag, uh, and then just checking it off as you put each item into your transition bag. Just so that you know that you've got every single thing that you need in your transition bag and you're all set to have a fantastic Ironman race. 
So hopefully this helps you uh, when you hop into some sort of Ironman branded event uh, and you're presented with these transition bags, uh, you will know exactly what to do. And if you're into triathlons, you're definitely gonna wanna go ahead and hit that subscribe button. There's also a notification bell down there somewhere uh, and that'll just allow you to be notified of whenever I post new videos, which is typically about once per week. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and we will see you guys on the next one.